Thank you. Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, uh, all protocols observed. I think the message is clear. Uh, our planet and ecosystems are stressed and have reached the tipping point due to our own activity, adverse human activity. Climate change and loss of biodiversity pose an existential threat to humanity. We must attend to this looming catastrophe with extreme urgency and single resolve. Greenwashing, green wishing, and other fig leaves will not solve the problem, and we must be bold. The private sector actors are some of the greatest polluters in the world due to the industrial processes they employ and the goods they produce. Yet the private sector also has the financial and technical capacity to reverse the harmful technology and stop destructive investment right in its tracks. The private sector, including manufacturers, funds, financial institutions, banks, and high net worth individuals, remain somewhat passive or provide modest and fragmented support in comparison to their resources. So one of the most significant challenges we face today is to secure the sharp private sector focus on sustainable development and finance in the same manner that the private sector focuses on profits and its own business operations, and to consider that solving and helping to turn around our catastrophe is actually highly, highly profitable, even if such an endeavor would have a low IRI relative to other commercial projects. We therefore urge the private sector to channel the same innovation energy and resources channeled to businesses for profit towards sustainable development and conservation. The private sector has funds in trillions and in all currencies to fund conservation and to help us rehabilitate our broken ecosystems and make an immediate impact. Likewise, it's also important that the public sector and governments honor their pledges, including the 100 billion annual fund that still remains unfunded a decade after its inception. Pledges must be honored in order to develop stable and effective funding mechanisms and to move us along. Governments in developing countries are burdened by debt and the cost of adverse effects of climate change brought about by activities far beyond their borders, much in the same way that we were all affected by the COVID pandemic. They have limited fiscal space and in any event, their industrial activities have minimal impact on global climate and the figures speak for themselves. It is therefore incumbent on the industrialized countries and those that contribute significant to global warming to A, stop those activities immediately. B, fund the rehabilitation of ecosystems that have been destroyed by the activities and fund prevention of further destruction. Support adaptation and mitigation efforts around the world. We must reduce emissions immediately, today, and not tomorrow. The Congo Basin Forest and the Amazon forests and the oceans that support life on the entire planet are being decimated and plundered today. We have run out of time and we must take decisive action. At a multilateral level, and in order to focus all our efforts and avoid fragmentation, resolutions should be made for example, under existing protocols or under the UN protocols, for a framework to require all multinational corporations or high polluting uh, institutions and countries to make formal commitments and table action plans to immediately stop those activities, but more importantly, provide financial resources from their current profits and future profits for conservation. We must have short and realistic timelines. We probably have maybe two or three years left on the clock, not more. From the financial sector, I would also urge that, particularly on the multilateral level, that the criteria that have been put in place for access to green finance or other resources should be streamlined and made efficient to ensure that countries can access those resources quickly 
and be able to implement their project in a timely manner. The current procedures are very long, some take years and are not responsive to the kind of challenges that we are facing today. I would also speak to the institutions that provide financial metrics, including the rating agencies and the accounting agencies to come up with a framework that would recognize and positively reward institutions, companies, and governments that take out money and resources to finance projects that have an effect on the global climate positively, and those that have a contribution that they can make directly to change the trajectory that we are in. The current financial metrics actually can tend to punish an institution that wants to set aside resources for this kind of activity, because the, the metrics measure profit for commercial entities, but does not measure profit in terms of returns to the public or to the planet. I thank you.